Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? This video is going to be on self-deliverance. A good brother inspired me to make this video. We had a conversation about how many people need deliverance and how it would be good to give them a way to pray for themselves and pray to the Lord on their own. Give them some kind of format for prayer. And um, I thought it was a great idea. So me and my brother Lloyd talked about it. He sent me some prayers he had, and I kind of mixed them with the way I pray. And this is what I came up with. This is how, you know, I would pray to God if I was going to try and deliver myself. And this is how I do. Um, I don't pray too much out loud when I'm by myself. I pray in my mind. Um, you could scream in your mind. You can beseech the Lord in your mind. You could travail in your mind. You could do anything in your mind. God knows your thoughts, that's for sure. So, usually I'll actually command these demons in my own head, out of my own body. I recognize my sin. I let them know that I know how this works and what's going on. I let them know that I'm a nobody and that I know I have filth in my flesh also. And it works, guys. If you meditate on righteousness and the best way to do it is to, you know, to, to bring up old sin, vain imaginations, and cast them down. And in your heart and mind, tell the Lord, I'm done with this. Uh, you got to mean it, though. And you'll come up with manifestations. If you're casting down things that those demons don't, uh, if, th if you're casting down things that the demons want to keep doing through you, and they want to make your body their habitation, and you cast them down, then the demons get mad because they they desperately want you to serve them. If you don't serve them, they have to go. And that's just the way it is. And everybody needs deliverance, me and everybody else. There are brothers and sisters that pray for me uh, at our sanctuary. There's brothers and sisters that have prayed for me before. I've manifested demons many times, many, many times. We just don't put it on the internet because of all the people that hate me will use it against the truth that we preach. They'll, you know, take, take the video and chop it up. But I am just the same as the people that call into my ministry. I go through all the same things with God. Nobody is any more anointed to do this than other people. Um, it's just that some people are more anointed with the desire to do this and that's why they seem to be more anointed. Do you understand? Every believer can do this. You can cast them out of yourself. You can cast them out of anybody. Most of the people you see on my videos that are manifesting, if I got my little girls or I got somebody else's little babies and they said, come out in Jesus' name, the demons would be coming out just as much, if not more, than me or anybody else that's praying. That's why when you see people going through a church, there's only so many people that manifest. No matter how great the, the minister seems to be, we're all just filthy sinners in actuality. After we give our lives to Christ, our will is no longer to sin. So we're really not described as sinners, but we still all have flesh. That's what I'm trying to say. We shouldn't look at ourselves as sinners, however. We should know that we are unclean, and we should fix it. You know what I mean? We should know that we're not perfect, and we should fix it. But we should not look at ourselves as sinners in the regard that you would say, Hey, I'm a sinner. You know, this is no big deal, the sin that I'm doing, because we're all sinners. In that regard, that's what I'm trying to say. It's confusing, but you need to rightfully divide it. Jesus Christ, Paul, nobody would go up to Paul and call him a sinner, but Paul called himself a sinner. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was acknowledging his flesh. He, he recognized things in himself that were wicked. That's why he was doing it. But some, the apostles or somebody following Christ in those days would never go up to him and be like, you filthy sinner. But somebody that's walking around like uh, engaging in homosexuality or whatever, those people would be called sinners because they're outward sinners. They're willful sinners. Anyway, without going into a teaching, I wrote down this prayer, um, and I'm going to read it to you guys. This is how I would pray. 
Now, when I get to the part where I am saying I have been these things, that's my personal repentance. That's what I would pray to God if I was praying because these are the sins I did. But you can replace them any which way. You, you could go down to the next section where I had um, sins that you're repenting for that your ancestors may have done. And if you personally did them in your life, just move them up into the section where you're personally repenting and shuffle the, the ones down that I have in that you weren't doing into the repenting for your ancestors section. This way, you don't miss anything, and this will give you an idea of some of the sins that bring demons in. So we're going to start off by addressing the Lord, and there'll be moments of commanding demons out. Um, I'm not going to go into long screaming to give you an example. Go watch my deliverances if you want to see how the, the, the fervent prayer that you need to do, the intensity of the prayer. Screaming at demons works. Some people say... Don't scream at demons, that's idiotic. The louder you pray against these things, the more it irritates them and provokes them to come up. The clo Skype is not as good as in person. The closer they can look at your eyes, or when you're praying for yourself, you can even envision your own eyes in your own mind in, in a situation like this where you're doing self-deliverance. But the, the, the confrontation... However it works out, in person, in the mind, the stronger the will is of the person confronting them, the better, and the louder they are. Even if you're praying in your mind, pray loud in your mind. Do you understand the difference between just la-di-da in your mind and, you know, you're, you're in your head, you're going, out, out, demons, you don't belong here, you don't have a right, you have to go now. You could do that in your head, rather than saying, Lord, I repent. I don't want any demons in my body, but you definitely get points for zeal, okay? So here we go, guys. I'm going to read the prayer. Father, I beseech you humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, as he is the way and the truth, and without faith in his sacrifice, no man can reach you, Lord. For he was your beloved son from the beginning, and even now is seated at gl in glory at your right hand. God, you are the Father of all spirits. You have exalted the Lord Jesus Christ above all principalities of evil and their legions. We know that Satan is the high power of darkness over this world. We know he operates and works even now to destroy all flesh. But we have faith in the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and we await his return eagerly. As without his return, no flesh would be spared. Satan was a murderer and a destroyer from the beginning, and we cannot escape him lest we follow the narrow path of Christ Jesus. This path I have sought with all my being, Father. You know my heart, Lord. Even as you split the Red Sea, that your people may escape, escape Egypt, we ask that by the sword of your mouth devils are severed from our souls so that we may prosper in your Son. Father, you form the light and you create darkness. You make peace and you create evil. You, the Lord, do all these things. A single sparrow cannot fall in the brush without your approval, Lord. Therefore, I know for certain you are aware of the spirits who war against me in the invisible realm of my soul. You are a just God who oversees the trying of my faith. You deliver me in six troubles, yet in seven no evil shall touch me. I know, God, that this life is a test, and I come to you humbly now, Lord, in hopes that this is the day I'm set free of my chains. I pray this is the day I'm worthy to be loosed of the bonds of wickedness. I have served you in word. I have served you in deed. I've served you in prayers. I've served you in fastings. But I know that without faith in your Son, Jesus, it is all vanity in your eyes. You are my God, and in you dwells no darkness at all. As you are perfect, so also was your Christ. But as for me, in my flesh dwells no good thing. And my spirit is willing to do all good things, but my flesh is weak. It is the habitation of devils, this I know for sure. For none is righteous, no, not one. We have all gone astray, we have all fallen short. Today I thank you, God, that while I was a sinner... You revealed your Son to me. 
Through faith in him, my will has been transformed, my desire for sin has disappeared, yet in this body of death I remain. I walk in this flesh until I behold Jesus as light that fills the sky from the east to the west. All things will pass away, but your words will not pass away, nor will your elect. You are not slack with your promises, as it appears to some, but you are merciful and long-suffering, eagerly desiring that we come to repentance. I have sought total repentance with every fiber of my will. I have warred against my flesh. I have turned from my lusts. I have forgiven my enemies. I have confessed my sins, which are many. But here and now I come again, God, as a child, to admit I've committed all these sins. I've been arrogant, a boaster, proud, a lover of money, ruthless, underhanded, destructive, a thief, a liar, manipulative, a mocker, rebellious, disrespectful to parents, selfish, jealous, unforgiving, and hateful. I've been a fornicator, a masturbator, a, a lust-filled abomination, an addict, a sorcerer, a New Age spiritist. I walked in the realm of devils and finally I exalted myself as a god. Please send your forces from the third heaven to dismantle the spirits that entered me by practicing these abominations as you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, now I would speak to the demons. Now I speak to you demons as a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. I bind the strong man in my soul and I come now to spoil your house by the blood of Jesus Christ you have come against me one way, and now you will be scattered seven ways by the angels of the Lord. I command you here and now to remove your hold on my members. Devils that cause me my eyes to lust, go now and walk in dry places. Say it loud, in your mind or out loud. Demons that cause me to run to wickedness, go now, loose my legs. Demons that cause my lips to speak evil and my tongue to move contrary to God, Go where Jesus commands. Demons hardening my heart, I rebuke you. Go now. Demons in my flesh, I break covenant with you and refuse to serve you through sin and lust. Go and do not return to my body. Then you can keep going. You can, if, if you're getting results at this time, keep saying out. Pray the Holy Spirit against them. Pray the power of God against them. Whatever you want to do, the words don't matter anymore. It's your repentance that counts. So that might go on for a while. You may be praying just there for an hour against these demons. So that was general repentance. Now, I would, I would pray again after this. Now I pray to you, God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You know the sins of man as far back as Eve was beguiled. And I ask you, God, to forgive the sins of my mother, my father, and all ancestors as far back to Adam and Eve. Obviously, this is the section where you're dealing with repentance for your ancestors and breaking bondage from the past that came down the bloodline. Okay? I ask for forgiveness on their behalf, and I repent on their behalf by my faith in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I ask that you break multi-generational demonic attachments of sexual sin, incest, witchcraft, homosexuality, occult practices, Freemasonry, idolatry, murder, human sacrifice, blood sacrifice, abuse, rejection, limitation, and gluttony. I ask that curses of poverty, addiction, and divorce be severed now, and the associated devils that came upon me when my ancestors had sinned against you, Lord. I ask that any demons that are following my bloodline cannot pass to my future generations, Lord, as I give those generations to your kingdom and your care. If you have kids right now or people in mind, name them. I would say... No demon will pass to Alana. None will pass to Liana. 
and then I'm giving them over to the, the, the Lord's care. That's what you do in your mind or out loud. Now all spirits that have haunted me and my ancestors, go now in Jesus' name. I call fire from the throne of the highest upon your spirit bodies. Fire, over and over again, as hot as possible. Fire, expand in, this, in, expand in my belly and purge my flesh. Come out of my mouth and go. Tell them how to come out. Tell them to come out of your mouth so they don't tear you if they're strong. You know what I mean? I loose gnashing and weeping and torment upon you. I call the sword of the Lord's mouth upon you. Out, out, out. I call legions of holy angels to escort you to chains, to escort you to suffering. Command them out over and over again. Pray torture upon them as the Holy Spirit leads. Again, now we're going to deal with witchcraft. I now pray to you, Father, to dismantle all weapons formed against me as your promise is that no weapon shall prosper unto death. Lord, send your angels to enter dark places where servants of Satan war against me, my health, my sanity, and my family. I ask that these angels dismantle ropes and locks fashioned to bind my soul. I ask that my personal belongings, photos, hair, blood, clothes, fingernails, and the like are covered in the blood of Jesus and rendered useless by my enemies. I ask that those who have formed images of me be vexed sevenfold according to their works. Those who have contained my soul, may your containers be shattered by the tools of your may the containers be shattered, may the tools of your craft be destroyed. Those who have put me on ice, may they suffer the burning of fire. Those who have put me through fire, may they be put on ice. You're speaking this because of the actions they do with the images that they form against you. Okay? Those who use demonic means knowingly to stalk me by astral projection, may they be held captive by their masters. Meaning, may they be captive by the same devils that are giving them that power. May those who operate in witchcraft ignorantly be scared to surrender to Christ. May your will be done on these people, Lord. I now command all demons who have tormented my life through witchcraft to go now and flee. Return to your sender. Return to those you have deceived, bearing the evidence of defeat by the blood of Jesus. Out now may God be glorified. Command them out over and over again. Command torment and com confusion on them. Loose me, I bind and rebuke you. Command them out, command them out. God, help me to recognize the ways that I displease you. Now you're going to go back to finish this up with the Lord and thank the Lord. But you may, again, be praying each time that you start commanding these demons out for anywhere from five minutes to hours, depending on where you are with your refinement. You know, are you new to Christ? Are you a, a demonic mess? Are you a demonic hive? You may need to do this for months. But this should not be an obsession. You should not become a deliverance groupie. Your walk should not become about your own deliverance. I've, I see it happening all the time now. When your walk becomes about your own deliverance, you've completely ruined your walk. While you're delivering yourself, you have to do the works that were done in the book of Acts. You're, you, you, God did not call you to Jesus Christ so you could just take deliverance for yourself and not give it back or give healing or give prayer or edification or good works or whatever. Again, we're going to finish this out with the Lord. We're going to ask Him, God, help me to recognize ways that displease you. Give me a healthy fear of your wrath that I may resist these natures. Help me with my idle words. Help me with my foolish jesting. Help me with overeating and greed. Lord, sever spiritual ties to my soul that were formed through people I have sinned against and hurt, and those who have sinned against me. Forgive me my trespasses as I have forgiven those who have wronged me. Again, make sure you have forgiven everybody before you do deliverance, because if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. That's in the Bible. Purge me of devils that have entered me through my practice, 
of various false religions and beliefs contrary to your word. If you've done beliefs contrary to his word, Buddhism, New Age, whatever, speak them. You need to be led by God. This is just a format. When you know you delved into sin and really gave yourself over to devils with lust, masturbating, porn, say, Lord, I, if you were obsessed with a porn star or a celebrity and you were lusting over them daily, speak their name, cast that imagination down, reject it in your heart and mind, or you will not get delivered. Demons are like a girl that you're breaking up with. If they know they still have a chance, they don't leave you the heck alone. Do you understand what I'm saying? They need to see that you've moved on to a new love, which is Jesus Christ. Otherwise, they're going to be like, I still may get this guy. They're just like people. They have a personality like you and me. They're like drug dealers. When I was a drug dealer, I would see if somebody was teetering on the fence. And they were, you know, they still wanted the drugs, but they were trying to fool themselves like they could quit. But really, their heart was for the drugs. They hadn't moved on to the Lord. They, they were weak. So I would keep on them. I'd keep inviting them over. I'd hang out with them, and eventually they'd crack and go back to drugs so I could make money. That's how demons operate, and that's how demonized people operate. When, when you think you got a chance to rob, to destroy, to kill, and that's your will, and you think you got a shot, you're not going anywhere. Now, it's my firm belief everyone has a strong man. So that strong man, a good way to find out what it is, is to go back into your life and find out the sins you've been doing all the way through the years from young. Go to the root. Find out what your flaw has been and hammer that. That's a good way to find out who the ruling spirit is in your flesh. So, you go on to say, Purge me of devils that have entered me through my practice of various false religions. Oh, I said that already. And beliefs contrary to your words. So, I'm done there. And then, I like to close it out with, May you have nothing to accuse me of before the highest Satan. I pray destruction over your kingdom. I exalt the Father of Jesus Christ forever. And I worship Jesus Christ now and forever. So, if I had to do it, I'd go about it like that. I don't get so much into naming every little thing. And, you know, a horseshoe, a clover, you know. Did a, a one back five years ago, I watched this music video, I watched that music video. I don't get too much into that, but I've seen that be effective too. But it's definitely not as effective as just repenting of the sins you're dealing with now, letting go in mind and heart, and walking with Jesus. Because people become obsessed with going back and doing it the way some other deliverance ministers were doing it, which kind of has you always in doubt that you didn't name a specific sin. And just because you're not, you forgot one little thing, you might still have demons. No, you should not be like that. Just repent, and you'll be at peace. Know that by your repentance, God will break your secret sins. Pray to Him. Say, absolve me of my secret sins. That's biblical also. That works. Do that. Rather than worrying about, did I, did I kiss someone under a mistletoe one year? Uh, did I look at an ornament on a Christmas tree one year? No, that's all stupid stuff, Christmas stuff. Just say, if you don't believe in Christmas, I don't celebrate Christmas anymore, but it's really just stupid junk. If you, if you did those things and you don't do them anymore, just say, Lord, I'm sorry for all vain traditions of men that I was involved in. And the Lord knows what you're aware of and what you've repented of. You don't, he, he doesn't hear you because of much words. The, he, more words don't make it better. More repentance makes it better. More humility makes it better. More sound mind. More, um, more service to the brethren. More being a servant, that's what makes you the greatest of all, serving others. So be blessed in Jesus Christ's mighty name, and have a good night. Amen.